Zero. Research Explorer in time and space. uncharted region of the planet called Earth stands the laboratory of Captain Zero. In this secret location, known only to a few in the outside world, Captain Zero and his associates experiment in time and space to learn from the past, to plan for the future. has been established. We now transmit you direct to the laboratory of Captain Zero. Please stand by. That's the last of it, Captain. Number three supply room is cleaned out. Good. I found some of the fireworks I'd been saving, too. Well, I just wait till the next 4th of July. How do you like the size of these? Just be careful with those things, Jess. Gunpowder in any form can be mighty dangerous. Yes, sir. ultrasonic ray machine you've been talking about? Yes, the electronics lab just completed it. Boy, it sure is a beaut. How does it work? Well, you know what ultrasonics are. Sure, they're high frequency sounds. Sounds so high we can't even hear them. It, that is, anything about over 20,000 cycles. That's right, but this machine is capable of producing 175 kilomegacycles. Wow, but that's, that's about 175,000 million cycles. Right. But even if you can produce them, what good are they, Captain? Well, as the sound waves are generated, they're reflected out by this parabolic reflector in a straight, narrow beam, and whatever the beam hits will be instantly shattered by the ultrasonic sound wave vibrations. Golly, I'd sure like to see it work. Okay, put that glass jug into the testing chamber. Yes, sir. Stand behind me. Man, if that jug had been an enemy rocket. That's the idea, Jeff. A ring of these ultrasonic rays around the laboratory would give us complete protection. Now, suppose you find a safe place for your private stock of gunpowder and we'll test the ray on something else. My gunpowder? Oh, you mean my fireworks. Yes, sir. Captain? Yes? Yeah? Who first thought of making fireworks out of gunpowder? It was the other way around, Jet. The idea of gunpowder came from fireworks. What do you mean? Fireworks were in use long before guns. In fact, the ancient Chinese used them for pageants and celebrations over a thousand years ago. Criminy! I didn't know that. The Chinese are responsible for a lot of things people don't know about. For instance, did you know that the ancient Chinese invented paper and actually printed books on it? No. And that they developed water clocks to tell time and were the first to use paper money? Golly, how do you know all this, Captain? It's no secret. Anyone who's read the adventures of Marco Polo knows these things. Marco Polo? Oh, yeah, he was one of the first Europeans to visit China, wasn't he? That's right. And for over 24 years, he carried a journal with him wherever he went, writing down everything he saw and did. Golly, I sure wish I could have been with Polo in China. Maybe we can arrange it. You mean activate the time machine? Right. Yes, sir. But China's an awfully big place, Captain. How are we going to find him? We should be able to pick him up in the palace of Kublai Khan. Set the time machine for the year 
1293, Shangtu, China. Yes, sir. Increase the voltage to 10 million. Stand by to activate the cycle reactor. Right. Tetro. Yes, sir. Stand by for operation of the time machine. Yes, sir. The electro generators, 4.270. Klystron output, 12.993. And set the trilotron at 20.672. Right. Ready, Jet? Ready, sir. Ready in the electro chamber? All set, Captain. Stand by for signal. Activate the cycle reactor. Steady. Good. We're cracking the fourth dimension and projecting back into time. 1900, 1800, 17, 16, 15, 14. Increase corona discharge. Hold it. Steady now. 1350, 1295, 94, 1293. Cut the cycle reactor and lock it. Level the power, Tetro. Activate the sound wave segregator and patch it into the time machine audio. Yes, sir. All set, sir. Stand by to activate the view screen. Yes, sir. There it is, Jet, the palace of the great Kublai Khan. Refocus inside. Well, where is everyone, Captain? Where's Kublai Khan? And where's Marco Polo? And where's... Easy, Jet. We'll just have to scan the whole palace room by room. Switch on the mobile scanner Captain, and we'll... Captain, wait! Look! Set the language rectifier to ancient Chinese, quickly. But we must speak with much caution, one. Many noble has had tongue cut out because it fluttered unfavorably about Marco Polo. Ah, uh, so. The great Khan treat white foreigner as though he were his own son, uh. even appointing him governor of Yangchow. These are my landling, lands of my honorable ancestors. Ah, Lee, but there is nothing one can do. But there is. Ah, uh, so? I go now. Would you like uh, some tea, honorable Ling? I go now to meet other warlords who dislike policies of Kublai Khan and Marco Polo. One way or another, we will right the wrongs that have been done. Wait, Wansu. There is happy possibility that Marco Polo will join honored ancestors sooner than you think. Arso, explain please. Marco Polo is at this moment in village of Shangchensu in Yunnan province. And as you know, many natives still practice most unique custom. Ah, yes. Should a stranger come to visit and is thought to be handsome, brave, noble, and cast good shadow, he is murdered. Yes, murdered. So that his beautiful soul will remain in their house to bring good luck. Ah, uh, so? Boy! Looks like we'll have to go to Yunnan province if we expect to see Marco Polo, and fast. Stand by to recalibrate. Right. Here it is, the village of Shang Chen Su. Latitude correction, eight degrees, three minutes north. Longitude correction, 12 degrees, five minutes west. Got it. Stand by to refocus. Yes, sir. Bring up the image acceleration. Increase target voltage. There it is, the village of Shang Chen Su. 
Now to locate Marco Polo. But Captain, where shall we look? Refocus to the house of the mayor and get a close up. That man knocking on the door. He doesn't look Chinese. He isn't. That's Marco Polo. Greetings, honorable stranger. Greetings. How can I be of service to you? Is this the house of Wu Sung, the esteemed mayor of the village? Ha so. This humble person is one whom you seek. I am Wu Sung. I am Marco Polo Wu Sung. I bear a message from the great Khan. Ha so. One of your handsome bearing could be no other. You cast a fine shadow. I am most honored, pleased to enter humble dwelling. But first, please be so kind to sign name here. It's old Yunnan custom. A most unusual practice. But most valuable to census taker and to police who may want to know whereabouts of certain person. Captain. Will that fellow try to kill Polo? I don't know, Jet. We'll just have to wait and see. Ha so. Pleased to enter humble dwelling, most illustrious one. Now, please, be so kind. Uh, come with me. Allow me to take cape. Thank you. You must be tired from long journey. Please to warm self by humble fire. Thank you. Wu Sung, why do you put those black stones in the flames? Will they not put out the fire? These are most unusual stones, Marco Polo. They burn as does wood, and they last much longer. They... they burn? Captain, what's so unusual about those black stones? They're just ordinary coal, aren't they? Yes, but coal was burned in many parts of China long before it was known to Marco Polo in the Western world. Stones that burn. Remarkable. How so? I must record this in my journal. Here is ink. Indeed, I shall have many wonders to tell when I return to Venice. Ah, uh, so. Forgive my impatient curiosity, Marco Polo, but you spoke of message from Kublai Khan? Oh, of course. He requests your presence at the Festival of the White Doves. Ah, uh, so. Please to tell Great Khan I am twice honored. First by exalt a one invitation, and second by presence in humble dwelling of good shadow of yourself. You are most flattering, Wu Song, but now I must go. No, first, before you go, must partake of friendship, a cup of wine. Thank you, Wu Song, but I really must be on my way. It's all you then custom is most special wine, one which my people serve only to one as noble and handsome as yourself. But really, I don't I care. I only take one moment. A small thing to you, Marco Polo, but it's most desirable to house a Wu Sung. These customs of China are most interesting. I am happy you find them so. Captain, he's going to poison Marco Polo. Oh, no, he isn't. Come here, quickly. 
Help me get the sonic ray machine in front of the view screen. But what are you going to do? We're going to project the sonic ray back into time and blast that wine cup. Are you sure it'll work? Pass the ultrasonic output into the time machine audio and reverse polarity. Yes, sir. I'll switch on the view screen sighting bar. Power. Ah! What in the name of... A thousand pardons, Bacopo. Cup must have been very old. Must have been cracked. Please forgive miserable Wusu. It's all right. These things happen. Now I must go. No, first, please don't drink mine. No, no. Next time, perhaps, when I can visit long. No, now. Please to drink now. Wusung. Forgive miserable Wusu. Sometime Wusung try too hard to be perfect host. Please forgive. Of course, of course. Allow me to assist with Cape. Captain! Good day, Wu Sung, and thank you for your courteous reception. How so? How so? <laughs> no. Poison. Spirit in the house of Wu Sung. Wu Sung must mend wings. Good work, Captain. I uh, so. Boy, we sure gave him something to think about. I imagine that's one Yunnan custom Wu Sung will be happy to forget. Yeah. Captain? Yeah? Will Marco Polo go back to the Palace of the Khan? Probably. Why? What about those warlords? Weren't they cooking up some way to get rid of him in case Wu Sung didn't? You're right. Reset the location back to the Khan's Palace at Shang Tu. Yes, sir. All set, Captain. Stand by to refocus. Wan Su. Ling. I have received news. Marco Polo has left the village of Shang Tsien Su unharmed. He is returning to palace. Ah, so? I too have news. The lords of the east and of the north believe as I do. The foreigner Marco Polo has become too powerful in court of Kobla Khan. He must be eliminated. But how is that to be? Marco Polo returns by way of Quan Tu. I have ordered him detained in castle there. But that is but a dungeon. How so? But, honorable one, if Marco Polo is harmed, Kublai Khan will have our heads. No, we also have planned to be rid of Kublai Khan. No. How so? For showing such favor to this foreigner, we have decided that the illustrious Kublai Khan is no longer worthy to be ruler of great Mongolian Empire. What is plan? Simple. Kobla. Kobla Khan will preside at Festival of White Doves. When he arrives to open ceremony, our armies will march through gates of Shang Tu. Then I, Wan Su, sit on throne of Mongolian Empire. Ah, so. Most daring plan. But first, we must dispose of Marco Polo. We have reason to believe he is spy for Kublai Khan. Come, we go to Quan Tu. Jet. Yes, sir? Stand by to refocus to the castle at Quan Tu. Yes, sir. Okay. Increase the plate power and check off focus. Right. Hold it. We're right on target. Captain, what are they doing to him? That's torture, Jet. 
the Chinese water torture. Water torture? What's that? You see that pot above his head? Yes. Water is dripping out of a hole in the bottom, a drop at a time, and falling on Polo's head. But what harm can a little water do? It's the sound of the water that does the damage, Jeff, and the expectancy. As the hours go by, each drop seems to become louder and louder until they sound like explosions. Eventually, those little drops of water will drive him mad. Crime it. Jet. Yes, sir? Stand by to activate the materialization chamber. I'm yes. going back in time and cut him loose. Right. Okay, Jet. Throw the switch. Spectral wave commences are opening. Turbo activity is increasing. Voltage is building up. Spark gaps are closing. He's transforming to electrical impulses and beginning to dematerialize. There he goes. He's gone. You. What are you going to do? I'm going to cut you free. Oh, thank you. The water. We Hurry. Have to pay for ourselves. I fear your eyes play your tricks. There is no one here but our good friend Marco Polo. Perhaps it's best you leave now. One so. Greetings, honorable guests. We hope you find water cooling and refreshing. Wan Su, are you behind all this? Yes, Marco Polo. It is my pleasure. But, but I've been your friend these many years. Friendship is but a mask you have worn falsely. No. You are a spy for Kublai Khan. No, you're wrong. Ah, so? Here is proof. This book in which you are always writing. But... That's only the journal of my travels. No, book contains secret reports for Kublai Khan, written in foreign tongue to high truth. You will regret this one, Sue. When Kublai Khan hears what you've he done, he will he'll... do nothing. For tomorrow, he will die at Festival of White Doves. You too shall die. Only more slowly. But first, the book must be destroyed. No, no. I've worked 17 long years on that book. Don't burn it. You must not burn it. No. Don't burn it. No. No. My eternal gratitude to you, sir. You know that I only saved my life. But my journal, my journal. But who are you? From whence do you come? Your dress is strange to me. I'm afraid the explanation would be even more strange. Besides, there isn't time. You've got to get away from here at once and warn Kublai Khan about the plot against his life. You're right. His life is in danger. And I still have some distance to travel. Would you come with me to make sure that I'm not captured again? You don't need me, Marco Polo. You won't be captured again. But how can you be so sure? I read a book somewhere. You read a... I don't understand. Never mind. You've got to get to Shang Tu at once. Hurry! Yes, yes, yes. I don't understand you at all, my friend. But thank you. Thank you. Jet, take me back. Mark gaps are closing. He's transforming from electrical impulses and beginning to materialize. He's coming in. He's in. Good work, Jet. Thanks, Captain. But you know, Marco Polo seemed to value that book of his almost more than his life. Was it that important? It turned out to be most important, Jet. Especially when read by men like Magellan, Vasco da Gama, 
Columbus. Marco Polo's writings fired their imagination and inspired dreams of finding new trade routes, which led to the great voyages of discovery and to the new world. when we again transmit you to this remote location on the planet Earth, where Captain Zero and his associates will conduct another experiment in time and space.